Hi folks, building an ultimate home and office computer is a tough challenge. 30 years ago, home computers such as iconic Commodore 64 and Amiga lost their battle against the classic PC as we know it today. On the wings of its success, it evolved into different types and models. For example, laptops traded their expandability and versatility for mobility. You could take your office computer home or work when you were on a business trip. You could access internet, you could do all the stuff, but the one thing you couldn't do was to put it in your pocket. Smartphones are the next evolutionary step. They are even smaller, but they do not offer any kind of upgradability except for a micro SD card socket that adds an option of a much larger data storage. Raspberry Pi was the first single board computer that really gained popularity amongst home users. Compared to, to the newer smartphones with large displays, it occupies even less space on your desk. It's funny, but it's true, you can also put it in your pocket if you build it into a minimalistic case. But the similarities do not end here. Smartphones also have systems on chip, which incorporate graphics cores many of which are more capable than Raspberry Pi's Video Core 7. They are also based on ARM processing cores and they also have about the same amount of main memory as Raspberry Pi 5. Though having a similar architecture, a Raspberry Pi 5 is also a very minimalistic computer. It doesn't even have a sound card. The mini PCs have many functionalities that Raspberry Pi 5 owners would love to have. For example, analog audio outputs, memory module sockets and M.2 PCIe connector for SSD drive. Because of this, they are usually twice as big. But having less functionality is not always bad. When Raspberry Pi 6 becomes available, you might decide to replace just your core computer and you would be able to preserve all of your peripherals and maybe even the power supply. Now you're probably thinking whether you would be better off with a classic PC, but the answer is probably not. Though it is possible to replace RAM modules, graphics card and even processor, it is highly unlikely for you to be able to do this after three or four years of using your computer or that it would have been economical, because it is usually a better choice of buying a new motherboard with new kind of memory modules and a new graphics cards that perfectly fit your new motherboard. So we have the same package as if we were replacing Raspberry Pi 5 with Raspberry Pi 6. Knowing all this, we may try to predict how a future PC architecture might have looked like. I believe that there would be a unified PC architecture, because if you take a closer look, look at uh, any kind of computers, today there is no new computer for home and office use without USB port. And PCIe bus, which is specially popular with SSD drive, so M.2 socket is also almost a must. Though Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't have it, other single board computers and mini PCs do have it. There is also a raging battle of processors with a different design. On one side we have Intel and AMD with x64 architecture and on the other we have ARM architectures that are actually licensed to many chip makers. There are the world of classic PCs and the world of smartphones. A vast majority of classic PCs are Intel and AMD processor based, while a vast majority of smartphones are ARM processor based. However, ARM processor designs are becoming increasingly popular with desktop PCs. Therefore, Microsoft have decided to make a special version of Windows 10 and 11 for ARM processor based computers, including Raspberry Pi. But the later may offer an answer how to incorporate different processor architecture into a new unified PC architecture. Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 are available as compute modules, which can be connected to a carrier board of an arbitrary manufacturer. There are a variety of carrier boards for different purposes, and there are also compute models of other manufacturers with different processors that also fit the same carrier boards. In the world of classic PCs, you can only replace your computer's processor with a compatible processor of the same manufacturer. 
A compute module includes processing, graphics and data storage capabilities. Though it is technically a computer, it cannot be used alone without a carrier board, which also provides all the needed voltages and input and output connectors. A carrier board may have socket for a single or multiple sockets for a larger number of compute modules that can run in parallel. They are usually connected in between with internal Ethernet or similar network. Our increasing integration levels within the chips of the compute modules requires shorter and shorter connections. I believe that in the future all the connectors that motherboards have today would become too large for fast communication speeds between main memory, processing chip and graphics chip. So they will all have to be integrated within one compute module. It would be possible for small computer manufacturers to produce various compute modules with different characteristics, say with different amount of memory or with a different graphics card. But of course everything would have to be much more integrated than it is now. Unified PC architecture would, in my opinion, be based on compute modules and carrier boards. It would also be possible to integrate all the components into a single board computer. Therefore, I believe that Raspberry Pi is some kind of a visionary computer, which has all the properties of future PCs. However, today we have many similar designs to Raspberry Pi, like Karok Pi, Orange Pi or Banana Pi, that are based on ARM architecture. There are also classic PCs that try to vastly mimic Raspberry Pi's functionality, but they are Intel processor or AMD processor based. But there are also those who think that Raspberry Pi has taken a lot from a classic PC architecture. They compare RP1 microcontroller to a cell bridge within a classic PC chipset, which incorporates controllers for slower devices like USB controller or SATA controller for connecting old-fashioned hard drives and SSDs, while Nordbridge within the same chipset provides PCIe connectivity, which is implemented on BCM2712 system on chip on Raspberry Pi 5, while the previous models of Raspberry Pis have all the mentioned functionalities implemented within their systems on chip. On the other hand, some single board classic PC manufacturers have even added expansion ports with similar configurations of GPIO pins like Raspberry Pi has. Actually, some single board classic PCs are able to use the same heads as Raspberry Pis. But what is actually needed are not GPIO pins because mini PCs don't have them, not because they couldn't have them, but because most of PC users don't need them. But what is needed? is hardware support for various operating systems and different kind of software. For example, Android software as well as Windows software. And we all know that if you want to use a classic PC to run a new Android version, then we will have to emulate ARM architecture to be able to do it. In the past, there were versions for Intel architecture as well, but they were abandoned. Only the development environment remained on Intel architecture. So probably, in the future, it would be convenient if you could have two compute modules in your computer, one for ARM architecture programs and the other one for Intel and AMD architectures. This way, no emulation would be needed. But if you want to have more power, you could add the same kind of compute modules, which would make your computer less versatile, but more powerful in a specific area, for example, for playing games. Thank you for watching. If you've liked the video, press like and subscribe buttons. The next video is coming soon. Bye.